What's going on y'all? This is Jake Berkey bringing you a Rock Rides Tech Tip video from Busted Knuckle Films and BerkeyRacing.com. Today, I'm going to teach you a thing or two about hydraulic steering. So there are two main types of hydraulic steering systems. The first type of hydraulic steering system will be a hydraulically assisted steering. Hydraulically assisted steering is perfect for on-road driving because you maintain a mechanical linkage from the steering wheel all the way to the tire. You have a steering wheel that's connected to a shaft that goes down to the gearbox, then through the drag link all the way down to the tire. So you constantly have a mechanical linkage. You end up mounting a hydraulic ram from the steering gearbox via two lines over to this hydraulic ram mounted on the axle and over to the drag link. Once you have it mounted, when you turn and the gearbox gets any type of resistance, it directs fluid down to the ram. The ram then takes over and helps push the tires left and right. This system is fantastic if you have a death wobble issue because fluids are non-compressible. So when you have fluid inside this cylinder and you're driving down the road with your hands straight, even if you have a tire that starts to wobble, it's not going to overpower your system and it's going to cure that death wobble and keep you going straight. If you were to bow a line, you'd still be able to get over to the side of the road because you maintain a mechanical linkage from the gearbox all the way down through the steering wheel into the axle. The second type of system, fully hydraulic steering system, you have no mechanical linkage that goes from the steering wheel down to the tire. So, if a line blows, you lose your steering ability. It's not good for on the street, but if you want the ultimate in off-road performance, there's nothing better than a fully hydraulic steering system. So, there's two main types of hydraulic steering systems that I can think of when I'm talking about a fully hydraulic system. One is a balanced system and one is a non-balanced system. And all that means is that the fluid on either side of the ram is either balanced or imbalanced. That comes from whether you have a double-ended ram or a single-ended ram. Let me show you real quick. A double-ended ram has a rod that travels all the way through a cylinder. As fluid comes in this passage and fills up this cavity, it pushes to the right or left, however you're looking at it. If fluid comes in this side, it does the same thing going the opposite way. The volume between the two is equal, so therefore it's a balanced system. In a balanced system, when you turn left and right, the fluid velocity is going to be very similar and the, the level is going to stay consistent. Now, let's look at a non-balanced system. A non-balanced system is a single-ended ram. A single-ended ram has a passage on the back and a passage on the front. When oil comes in through the back side of the passage, it has more of a void to fill up because there's no rod to displace any fluid on the back side. On the front side of the rod, when oil comes in, it has less of a passage to fill up because it has a rod there. So therefore, in that system, when you turn back and forth, the velocity of the fluid has to increase because of the smaller and larger amounts of fluid that have to pass through the lines, and also the fluid's gonna go up and down. A third thing that's gonna happen is it's going to steer one way faster than the other. So now that you know a little bit about the two different systems and how they react going left and right, how the fluid rises up and down, what we need to talk a little bit about is how to calculate the volume of a cylinder. And the reason is, if you're designing your own system, you're going to need to understand how the differences are going to react in your system and how to calculate turns lock to lock with your orbital valve. So, in this situation, we have the volume being pi times r squared, which is the radius squared times h. We're talking about a two and a quarter inch bore cylinder with an inch and an eighth rod. So we have to do the calculation twice. We're going to do the calculation for the bore here, and then we're going to do the calculation for the rod here. When we get the bore size, we have to subtract the rod size because there's no fluid where that rod's at, and that's going to give you the total amount of volume that's in that cylinder. Once you know the total volume that's inside the cylinder, in this case, 23.86, 
Then you take that number and you divide it by the orbital displacement. The orbital valve is the heart of this whole entire system. Your steering wheel is going to go down to the orbital valve. Your power steering pump is going to put pressure into the orbital valve and it's just going to bypass until you turn the tires or turn your wheel. When you turn your wheel, it's going to deflect the fluid through the orbital valve down to the hydraulic ram and it's going to cause it to turn left or cause it to turn right. So, the orbital is what actually dictates how much fluid goes from one side to the other. And in this case, we sell three different sizes. 7.3 cubic inch, 9.7 cubic inch, and 11.3 cubic inch. That's how much fluid that thing is going to displace with one revolution. So, if you know the displacement per revolution, you can divide that displacement into the amount of volume it takes for the cylinder, and that's going to give you how many turns lock to lock. All the way left, all the way right. So, in this situation with a two and a quarter inch bore cylinder, our 7.3 cubic inch is going to give you 3.27 turns. Our 9.7 cubic inch is going to give you 2.46 turns, and our 11. 3 cubic inch is going to give you 2.11 turns. Now, how do you know how many turns that you want? Well, I'll tell you. Picture yourself going 100 miles an hour. You're in the desert, you're in an Ultra 4 car, and you're skipping through the desert real fast. If you have touchy steering, meaning that a little bit of a play on your steering wheel is going to give you a lot of tire movement, a low a, a, a high number, basically a low number of turns locked to lock, but a high displacement orbital valve, it's going to cause you to become very unstable. So you're driving and you hit a little bump, your hand barely twitches, the steering is going to go crazy, you're going to try to fight, next thing you know, left, right, left, right, and you're barrel rolling. You don't want that. That's not what you want. You want to stay in control. So if you're going fast, you want something that's going to be three and a half turns lock to lock, or maybe even four if you're talking about going real fast. You don't want a lot of steering input. But if you're in the woods and you're going slow, you're going to want something that kind of steers fast. Or if you're rock racing and you're constantly dodging trees and rocks and saving rollovers and you're getting crooked, you want that thing to have something that's going to steer fast. And that way you can react fast. If you're going real slow and you start to tip and you got to steer out of it, you want to go turn gas and flip that thing back on its tires like that. But if you're going fast and you have that same scenario, you'll lose control. So try to pick one that's according. If you don't know what that number is, give me a shout, give me an email, and I'll see if I can't help you out and recommend something for you. The cool thing about this whole thing is you don't actually have to do any of this math that I did over here. You don't have to really know much about this stuff down here because if you go to BerkeyRacing.com and you go in the steering section, click on the hydraulic steering cylinders. When you click on the hydraulic steering cylinders, there's going to be an option. You click on the option, it's going to give you a three different choices that pop up and you can choose just how many turns you want lock to lock. It's that simple. So once you get the recommendation or you know what you want, just go on, this, just go on the website. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff and just click on how many turns you want lock to lock and click the checkout button and you're on your way. One of the other things I want to talk about today is the steering wheel diameter. If you're in a situation where you have a very large steering wheel, and you're trying to turn that thing. Just because of the diameter, basically the circumference of that, you're going to have to turn a whole bunch more to get it to react. If you have a smaller diameter steering wheel, it doesn't take as much to get as much steering. So, one of the first things that you can try out if you have slow steering and want fast is just go to a smaller steering wheel. It's going to help you out a little bit. It's going to make a little bit of a difference. It might be all you need. If you're doing this opposite and you want something to slow your steering down, go to a larger steering wheel. It's going to give you more leverage to be able to turn, but it's also going to slow the steering down because you're going to have to put more effort into it. Now that we've covered steering speed by talking about the orbital and we've talked about the volume and we talked about the difference between a balanced and an imbalanced ram, how do you know what bore size you need? Well, the larger the bore, the more force that your power steering pump can put onto your tires, basically through your steering onto your tires. So, in my opinion, in my experience, I think that a 37 or smaller inch tire is a great matchup for a two and a quarter inch cylinder. If you're running a 37 to a 44, a two and a half, two and three quarter inch cylinder is a good matchup. Anything bigger than that, go ahead and step up to the three inch cylinder. 
Now, that's not always the case because sometimes you have to do things that are a little bit outside the box. In my situation on my buggy, I had to run a two and a quarter inch cylinder with a 43 inch tall tire because of some clearance issues. But the other reason that I do that is because I personally like lightning fast steering. I want that steering to react so fast that I can steer out of rollovers, I can flip myself back and my tires roll fast. I don't want steering that I have to fight. I want to be able to almost hit lock to lock with one hand. So I use the highest placement, highest displacement orbital that I had with the smallest bore that I had that gave me the fastest steering possible. But there's trade-offs. In that same scenario, you have lost a lot of leverage going to the tires because the bore size is smaller. How does that work? Well, it's called Pascal's Principle. I'm not going to go into all that stuff, but there's, there's a couple different things I can kind of relate it to that might help you think about it. How in the world do you think that you can stop a vehicle using just your left foot or right foot? You can because of hydraulics, because of leverage in hydraulics. You have a pedal that you push and there's a small cylinder called a master cylinder. It might have a three quarter inch or a one inch bore. When you push that pedal down, you're traveling that bore really far. It's small, but that pressure gets multiplied when it gets down to the calipers. The caliper bore is a lot bigger. When you do the calculations for Pascal's principle, you'll find that you're multiplying the force exponentially whenever you do that. So you can stop an entire vehicle by just your right foot. Same thing happens when you're talking about a hydraulic steering system. Your hydraulic pump is going to be set to a certain PSI from the factory. It's going to be high enough that it doesn't blow the pump up and it keeps the service life very long and it doesn't degrade and blow up. But that pressure is completely constant, right? It's always putting out that same pressure. It's always putting out that same pressure. So whenever you direct the fluid through your orbital valve down to the steering system, that diameter makes a big difference. So a smaller diameter is not going to give you as much pressure, but it's going to give you a lot of speed. A larger diameter is going to give you a lot of pressure, but not as much speed. So keep that in mind and think about what you might be using this vehicle for. If you're specialty purpose this vehicle, if you're doing something like mud racing, you don't need a lot of pressure. You don't need a lot of pressure because you're not up against a rock trying to saw the tires into it. So you can get by with a smaller cylinder, smaller orbital and all that stuff. That's going to make the system components last a lot longer. When you start gaining a lot of pressure, those pumps, they're working really hard. It's a lot of strain. You're losing horsepower through that. So design your system so that it's doing the minimal amount of work to basically do what you need it to. Okay, so we've covered a number of topics and we're all the way through most of the system when you're talking about the design of all the components that are going to give you the performance. Now, we need to talk a little bit about the things that make the difference in a steering system. The first three things I want to talk about are probably the most important things that you can talk about when you're talking about any hydraulic systems. That's the three F's, the flush, the filter, and the fluid. If you have any particulates inside your system, any dirt, any debris, or anything like that, it will absolutely wreak havoc on your steering system. So you always want to flush and put good fluid in there, make sure that everything's out of the lines. The next F is for a filter. I know a lot of vehicles from the factory don't have filters. I don't want to talk about vehicles from the factory. We're talking about off-road performance rigs that are dedicated to the trail. You need a filter because I don't care how hard you try, when you pull that cap off to check the fluid, something's going to get in there. And if it starts running around and going through the system, you're going to blow a pump. If you blow a pump, it's going to send shrapnel through the system. Then every pump you put on after that, you're going to just blow up and blow up and blow up and blow up. I see guys all the time talk about how Oh, I had this power steering pump. It was great for X number of years. It blew. I put another one on. And man, I'm telling you, the quality of those guys just went downhill because everything I put on there just blows from here on out. Well, it might have something to do with your fluid. You need to make sure that you've got good, clean fluid, and you need to make sure that it's filtered before. These power steering pump uh, reservoirs that we sell are actually filtered inside the canister. So all of that stuff is going to get caught and not make it through the system. The last thing is your fluid. Don't go off with a, a high pressure steering system that's fully hydraulic and expect to run O'Reilly Auto Parts fluid. It's not going to work. It might work for the short term, but the problem is that fluid is not designed for that type of system. 
First of all, it gets hot a lot quicker than a fully synthetic fluid. It, the next thing it does is it breaks down quicker than a fully synthetic fluid. The third thing that it does is it aerates. And what happens is fluids don't like to be under vacuum. So whenever that power steering pump is trying to suck fluid in from the reservoir and pump it through the system, if you have a bad fluid, it'll cause air bubbles a lot sooner in cavitation. Cavitation will blow up a pump. So make sure that you get a good fluid. We sell the Elixir from KSC right on our website, and you can get a couple other ones right there on the website, so check those out. When you're building the steering system, you need to keep in mind that the reservoir needs to be mounted as close to the pump as possible. A lot of times guys will take that reservoir and stick it up there by the firewall and put their pumps all the way in the front of the motor. It does work. I've seen it work. But you risk a lot by doing that. First thing is, the longer that tube is, the harder it is for that pump to suck the fluid out of the reservoir. Pumps don't like to suck. Remember, they like to put pressure out. So you, you increase the amount of cavitation probability. You don't want to do that. You want that power steering reservoir as close to that pump as possible. There's a reason why almost every single vehicle sold in a factory orientation had the reservoir built into the pump. You know those old pumps. They've got the little canister and the pump sits inside. That's because it's the perfect scenario. Your pump is surrounded by the fluid. It keeps it cool and it doesn't cavitate because it has no tube to be pulling through. When you take that reservoir and you stick it all the way up there by the firewall, you're risking blowing that pump a lot sooner. If you want the hydraulics to last, make sure you put the reservoir very close. Next thing you need to do is make sure that that line is as big as possible. I try to sell everything in a dash 12, and the reason is, is that's about the biggest fitting that you can monkey around inside there. Anything bigger than that, it gets really difficult to work with. The smaller stuff, the 10s are okay, Stay away from eights or anything less than that. Anything less than a 10 you want to stay away from. On the return side of the system, it's very important to keep the return side clear because, again, pumps do not like to suck. They only like to put the pressure out. So on your return side, run a good quality dash eight hose throughout the entire system with as little to no 90s or 180s as possible. The longer that that hoses, the harder it is for that pump to suck the fluid around. So try to keep everything nice and tight. You don't want that velocity to be slowed down by any sharp angles because again, it's difficult for that pump to suck and it ends up causing that pump to cavitate and it ends up causing the pump to die premature death. Now that we've talked about all those items, the last thing that I want to talk about is having a cooler on the system. You need a cooler on the system just to dissipate the heat as much as possible. The fluid likes to break down a little bit easier. It's going to keep your system alive a lot longer. If you're out in the desert and you're doing some hardcore racing and the temperatures are real high, you're doing a lot of steering wheel turning, you're going to want to have something that's got a fan on it to suck a lot of that heat out. If you're just going trail riding, rock bouncing, stuff like that, that's a little bit shorter burst, you can get by with a heat sink type. But it's just a little plate heat sink type. Both of them are for sale on the website. Just go on there, look at the fluid coolers, and you can buy those directly off that. Now, once we get done with the whole entire system, we get everything plumbed, everything is done, everything is working the way it's supposed to be, it's going to be a fantastic thing for you because it's got so much better performance than a hydraulically assisted steering or no hydraulics at all. When you're buzzing through and you hit a rock or something like that, it's a lot less prone to jerking the steering wheel really hard. It's a lot stronger. It can take a lot better hit. I highly recommend going to a fully hydraulic system if you're off-roading completely. If you're doing a little bit of on-road stuff, then you're going to have to go with a hydraulically assisted steering because you don't want that thing to blow a line and cause you to lose any type of steering. If you like the video, make sure you subscribe. You can go on to Busted Knuckle Films, check out the Rock Rods page on YouTube and on Facebook. Make sure you like the Jake Berkey Riot Buggy page. It's on Facebook and also Riot Buggy on Instagram. We take all these videos, we dump them down there, and that's where they come out first. You guys can check them out. I've got a whole list of them on the website. I hope you guys really liked it. Now, I need to ask y'all to go in the comments and put a couple things that you'd like to see for in the future. Uh, one guy suggested this hydraulic steering. It just so happens that I wanted to do it this day, so we did it. And I think it came out good. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Hope to see you guys out on the trail, and uh, check us out.